Hi class, so today we're going to talk about film noir, which translates into black film. The peak period was mid-40s through the mid-50s, uh, as well as 1980s through current. It's a type of movie made in America, especially popular during World War II. Its roots are in German expressionism. Many of the directors are Germans and Austrians who emigrated to America after Hitler came to power, and in American pulp fiction. Its impetus seems to come from the persuasive insecurity and confusion of the post-war period. So this is Touch of Evil, and what's interesting about this is it's all one shot. Um, so a as you watch this clip, notice how there's no cuts, so it's kind of a technical feat for its time. And again, these are dark films, oftentimes with detectives. Gotta get rid of that ad. So all one shot. So the car explosion was the first cut you saw in that film. And this is a way that cinema separates itself from television. Is that it would take a very, very long time to do that in terms of TV, and so it's sort of like, it's what filmmakers do, I guess, to be cool, but also to um, do something that television cannot do. And that's why we pay to go to the movies. Two plots predominate film noir. A detective descends into an unstable, unpredictable, unpredictable, corrupt universe as he or she searches for the truth. So this is Chinatown, Jack Nicholson. 
this is about a detective in the uh, 40s, 50s who is investigating why there's a water shortage in Los Angeles. And he ends up uncovering sort of a murders and plot t twists. So we won't watch all this clip, but I'll watch, play a little bit, bit of the beginning, and then I'll cut to, um, no pun intended, uh, the scene, part of the scene where he gets his nose cut off. So again, the LA River is dry, and he's sort of investigating why, so he's descending into this universe, and it's going to corrupt him. So this is later on that same night. That's the director of the film. Hello, Clark. Where'd you get the midget? You're a very nosy fella, kitty cat, huh? You know what happens to nosy fellas? Huh? No? Wanna guess? Huh? No? Okay. They lose their noses. The second type of plot, an ordinary, basically decent person gets drawn into a corrupt environment which poisons that person until he or she also ends up corrupt. So this is Blue Velvet, and basically um, we have a high school student who, he um, gets into the apartment accidentally of a lounge singer nearby, but this lounge singer, um, she is tied up with a gangster in the area. And so one night it's discovered, he's discovered in her apartment and uh, he's taken out by the gangster and sort of beaten up, roughed up. This would also be an example of surrealism. And I'm, we won't watch all of this, but you can always watch the full clip on cameras. You look at me, fuck! This scene revived, or this film revived the career of Dennis Hopper. Oh, look at you. Oh, what are these? 
<sighs> Don't say please, fuckhead! Oh, <sighs> baby. Oh, baby, you must feel pissed down. What's the matter? Oh, oh, get him back. Oh, oh, what's the matter? Just don't worry, that's all. Oh, get him, let me feel. Oh, come here. Oh. Hey, leave her alone! send you a love letter. Straight from my heart, fucker! You know what a love letter is? It's a bullet from a fucking guy and fucker! You receive a love letter from me, you're fucked forever! You understand, fuck? So again, this high school kid just sort of gets caught up in this really bizarre world. Both the hostile universe and the hero's moral confusion are externalized via external cinematic variables as such as follows. Low key lighting, which casts up immense shadows, bizarre camera angles, scenes at night in which pools of blackness are broken up by pockets of light, flashing neon signs, dense fog, clouds of cigarette smoke. So we talked about we will talk about this in cinematography. Uh, when there's just a little fill light to, Depends, like, the key light is from this side, the fill light is from this side. If you don't have a lot of fill light, it creates dark shadows, and it's often used in horror films, such as in, we saw that in Touch of Evil earlier. And this is a Blood Simple, a Coen Brothers film. You can see it has elements of noir to it in terms of the cinema, cinematography. Although film noir has its roots in expressionism and also embodies a similar conception of women, they're mysterious, unknowable, unknowable, dangerous, and evil. They are homewreckers, predators, and man-eaters, often wearing white. In the 70s, feminists objected to these depictions. In the 80s, however, some feminists read these films against the grain and discovered positive. They may be evil, but they are also intelligent and independent. E. Ann Kaplan's Women in, Women in Film Noir is an excellent collection of essays on the subject. So this is Body Heat, and you're going to have a detective, William Hurt, He's going to meet the woman in white, Kathleen Turner, and uh, she's going to seduce him. And because of that, a lot of bad things are going to happen to him throughout the course of this movie. I'm going to notice the music and the neon lights and the cigarette smoke. I'm going to cut it ahead a little here. You can stand there with me if you want, but you have to agree not to talk about the heat. I'm a married woman. Meaning what? Meaning I'm not looking for company. And you should have said I'm a happily married woman. That's my business. What? How happy I am. And how happy is it? You're not too smart, are you? <laughs> I like that in a man. What else do you like? Lazy, ugly, horny? I got them all. You don't look lazy. <laughs> Tell me, does chat like this work with most women? Some, if they haven't been around much. I wondered. 
Thought maybe I was out of touch. I'd buy you a drink. I told you, I've got a husband. I'll buy him one too. He's out of town. Your favorite kind. We'll drink to him. Only comes up on weekends. <laughs> I'm liking him better all the time. It's quick, in about 45 minutes I'm going to get up and go away. You want to buy me something? Yeah. I'll take one of those. What kind? Cherry. Cherry, thank you, sir. Notice the way they talk. People don't really talk like that in real life. It's uh, The dialogue in film noir is very stylized. The last film noir of the classical Hollywood period was Touch of Evil. Ever since then, noir has been evolving. Indeed, most films today just borrow a few of the roots or the conventions of the film noir, but are technically not film noir in the strict sense of the classical Hollywood tradition of film noir. Uh, so this is Memento, Christopher Nolan, and he often uses um, uh, more noir type elements in this film. So in this film, this character cannot remember anything for more than five minutes, and so he tattoos his body because he's trying to find his wife's killer, but he forgets every five minutes, so you can see the problem. And in this, um, you'll see a femme fatale who is tricking him using his ability to not remember for more than a few minutes. Shit out of me. Who? Who? Fuck, let him die. Die, beat the shit out of me. So that's Memento. Coen Brothers, again, they play a lot with the genre. Uh, Blood Simple. And then a comedy. You wouldn't think of a film noir could be a comedy, but The Big Lebowski. This is about Jeff Bridges' character, is The Big Lebowski. He's the laziest man in L.A. And he somehow he gets because he has the same last name of a rich man whose wife is kidnapped he gets involved in this uh, plot and uh, in this particular scene he's trying to find out um, from a little kid what's happening it's your homework Larry is this your homework Larry yeah, man Dude, please is this your homework, Larry? Ask him about the car, man. Is this yours, Larry? Is this your homework, Larry? Is it in your car out front? Is this your homework, Larry? We know it's his fucking homework. Where's the fucking money, you little brat? Look, Larry, have you ever heard of Vietnam? Oh, for You're course. entering the world of pain, son. We know that this is your homework. We know that you stole a car. And the fucking money. And the fucking money. And we know that this is your homework. I'm gonna cut your dick off, Larry. You're killing your father, Larry. Alright, this is pointless. Okay, time for plan B. You might want to watch out that front window, Larry. Son, this is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass! Language problem here. Little prick stonewalling me. Walter! What, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? 
are you doing? Here you go, Larry. You see what happens? You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens? This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass, Larry. This is what happens, Larry. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass? This is what happens. You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens, Larry? You see what happens, Larry, when you fuck a stranger in the ass? And um, the long goodbye, uh, classic film noir. So the de detective basically uh, finding a big twist at the end. The character Marlowe often appears in uh, detective stories. How you doing, Terry? Marlowe? I guess if anybody's gonna track me down, it'll be you. Want a drink or something? No, I don't want no drink. You get a kick out of that Madison I sent you? Yeah, I got a big kick out of it. So you murdered your wife, but huh, Terry? Well, I killed her, but you can't call it murder. Wade told her about Eileen and me. She started screaming. She was going to tell the cops. She knew I was carrying money for Augustine. She was going to turn me in. I hit her. I didn't try to kill her. I hit her. I didn't mean it. I saw the photographs, boy. You bashed her face in. She didn't give me any choice. You didn't have much choice, huh? So you used me. The hell, that's what friends are for. I was in a jam. Come on, have a drink. I had a dead wife. $350,000 that doesn't belong to me. I had to get out. It's as simple as that. Simple as that. Goddamn simple. Cops have me legally dead. Augustine's got his money. He's not looking for me anymore. I got a girl that loves me. He's got more money than Sylvia and Augustine put together. But hell, nobody cares. Yeah. Nobody cares but me. Well, that's you, Marlo. You'll never learn. You're a born loser. Yeah, I even lost my cat. And this is just a shot from a student film that I worked on where kind of you can see the lighting kind of matches the film noir. If you watch Sherlock's Last Mystery on, under the final projects, you can see that she did her film as a film noir too. So if you have any questions on film noir, just email me.